Hey everybody, it's your favorite host, Jochen Haydn, and we're back with the Lodric vs. Haydn campaign scenario one with no mods. We're now in the 25th of March 1942. This is turn 109. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we are. We're back with the Lodric campaign. This is March 25th, 1942. Alright, he just grabbed another dot base in the Gilberts. Coast watchers at night. All right, he's continuing to unload a Vava U. Oh, I don't know. I think those are my ships. <laughs> I think those are my ships. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh. Okay, check this out. We have the Kirishima. Um. At Pago Pago, I need to I need to take note of that. Where's my intel officer? Write this down. Now we know exactly where at least one of his battleships are at. So he's bringing in the big boys here because he's tired of the fact that he isn't making any progress on this island. So he's going to bring in some big ships to bombard it to kind of loosen it up. They didn't really accomplish too much, but they damaged the base, which is fine for me because he's gonna <laughs> this is going to be his base someday. So the Kirishima coming in solo. Uh, at Pago Pago. Hmm. Interesting. Let me write that down. Oh, wow. Here he is. But why here? This seems kind of slated. Well, whatever. All right. So Lodric is active in the Dutch East Indies again. Okay, now he's landing at Savi in the Samoa Islands. He's bringing in some small ships for this. All right, he's bringing in a very small uh, force for this. One ship's worth. Okay, looks like the 67 Naval Guard, or at least part of it's coming there. Okay, now we got some daylight. We'll probably see more spotting now. Okay, now we're air operations. A, a, a smallish bombing raid in this hex. So what he's trying to do is slow these troops down, knock them out of move mode so he can catch up to them and attack them. That's what this is about. i pretty sure this hex is, is times three terrain, so that's in our favor. So we should see reduced casualties from that, I think. I think it is. Okay. Another big bombing raid here. This unit is kind of sacrificial because it just didn't get out in time. Okay, he's continuing to attack these guys that are north of San Marinda. I'm just trying to get them to the coastal hex so I can evacuate them via seaplane. Alright, uh, what appears to be a dual raid coming in from Changsha and Nanyang. He's trying to slow these troops down to, from getting into position. They don't really accomplish much, though. And everything's got escort. You see that? Alright, so this unit is uh, being a good proper meat shield for me. There you go. So that AM phase was pretty benign. OK, 
Okay, we got some Sonyas, which I have very low respect for, attacking these troops that are retreating out of Cheng Cheng Te. More Sonyas. Great. More Sonyas. Wow, that was a really quiet air phase today. Nothing nothing crazy. That's fine. I will take I'll take not crazy. <gasps> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, 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 oh man. Come on. Come on, Mark 14 torpedoes. Come on, man. Ah. So we actually got a hit on this thing. And it did nothing. It 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 was a dud. And one of those torpedoes would have vaporized that ship. Man, that's a bummer. Hmm. Oh, Mark 14 curse. And we're only in March, so I've got many, many months of that to go. Okay, well, this is um, pretty expected here. Yeah, look at this. Four more divisions. Like if he throws them into here, I don't think we can hold. Uh, hopefully, I want this unit to be destroyed. That's what I want. Yes, that's a good thing. We wanted this. All right. I don't want this thing falling back. And here's why I want it destroyed. Um, it will respawn in Chungking eventually. That's how Chinese units work when they're destroyed. They automatically come back without having to be bought back. And they come back with one-third of their TOE. So this unit actually had less than one third of its TOE to start. So it's like it gets free units more than what it even had when it was destroyed. So there's like no reason to not sacrifice these Chinese units, especially if they're under strength because they come back stronger anyway. So like, you know, <laughs> why not? Okay. He's going into Vava U. Crabs that. Alright. Um, I think he has a better chance of winning here now with the bombardment. I think he disrupted us. So, let's see how this goes. Alright. So, even the Kirishima wasn't enough. Wow, look at this. So, despite the 3 to 1 odds, he takes down the fort. He does take quite a bit more casualties than we do. Although mine are very uh, finite and his he has a lot more of. But we hold another day at Pago. Ooh, port size 6 at Pago Pago. Oh wait, no, ADAC. Even better. Not a bad turn. Got the Tennessee getting upgraded over there at Mare Island now. That's one of our Pearl Harbor survivors. Got some, they've got some units to look at here. I'm not sure what all those were transfers or not, but let's take a look. Not a bad turn. Not too bad. Okay, well, um, <laughs> this, this didn't go well. This whole operation up here didn't go well, but the silver linings to it. But we got a lot to talk about today. Let's get to it. Okay, aircraft losses for this turn are one, and they're not mine. It's an Oscar was lost to the ops, which is nice. I didn't lose an aircraft today. Uh, no top pilots to talk of because they're all 
Uh, nobody got nobody nobody crashed today. Looking at reserve pool. Let's take a look at wounded pilots. See how we're doing with these. So we have Langdon again. Transfer to reserve and all shorn. Again, I don't know why I keep doing this. Let's see if I can find out why these guys keep coming back. Langdon's coming back. Right? And all shorn's coming back. I keep sending them to the reserve and they keep coming back. I don't know what's happening with these guys. Maybe it has something to do with their rank. Squadron leader. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know why I keep sending these guys to get back in and they're not. The rest of these fools, I'm about ready to start retiring them because I don't think they're ever coming back and they're just clogging up my list. So, uh, off screen here, I'm probably going to go through and retire a lot of these wounded pilots because I'm tired of looking at them. That means you, Tanner B, you're out of here. All right. Let's take a look at army loss points for this turn. We lost 38. <laughs> Yeah. 38 and Lodric lost zero, of course. And that brings. Well, it doesn't bring anything. Let's keep going. <laughs> Had a moment of a lapse there. Ship sunk. So. Okay. No ships were sunk last turn. However, I was looking at Tracker and I saw something very interesting there. And I'm going to wait to the end of the video to, to show you guys. But I think we can add another something to this list here soon. We'll, we'll get to that at the end. All right. For the turn, the Japanese went up an additional 91 points, bringing their win ratio up to 1.856. Okay. So let's start with the combat report because there is something in there I want to show you. Look at this. Minesweeping operations. We have the uh, these two patrol boats, which I didn't know had any kind of minesweeping capability. Found some of my mines that I dropped off at Toyohara and were able to clear them without hitting them. So that's not so great. I, I just had one sub and I just dropped some mines there hoping that something would come of it and nothing did. I, I have terrible luck with mines in this game. I hit them all and mine never hit anything. So he swept those out. And I scrolled through the rest of this. And for what I can see, there's no desync issues on this particular turn. So let's cross that off the list. That's done. Okay, the second for this turn. Now, um, a couple things that stood out to me. One was that we have one, two, three mentions of radio traffic at Rabal. So let's go take a look at that real quick. Because normally when you have that many radio calls, something good can come out of it. And sure enough, there is. Um, we see how many troops and units he's got in place. We see he's got 42 fighters and 21 auxiliary uh, aircraft. These are probably float planes and the like. And then we also have four ships in port. So uh, the last time I acted on this intelligence, we hit gold. So I may want to try to do something with that again. We do have some good moonlight. The forecast is overcast, but not thunderstorm, so we have a good chance of flying. So we may want to try a night raid here. I think I might want to do that. And the last thing I saw was this. 56th Engineer Regiment planning for an attack on Colombo. Now, I don't know if I believe that anymore or not. I think he. I think now that Lodric has confirmed to me that he is aware of Sigint spoofing, it might just be a, a leftover from something else. So, I don't... Uh, I don't think this is anything. I'm sure these guys are going somewhere, but they're not going to Colombo. That would be suicide run for the Japanese. All right. So let's talk about ops report. There's a lot of stuff in here too. So a couple things that stood out to me. We'll start with this. ADAC, port size 6. That's a good thing. Once we get to port size 7, we'll be able to start actually repairing ships and at pier side would damage up to five major damage on their on their system so uh, this is good it, it, it's the closest thing to a shipyard that i'm going to get without going all the way to prince rupert or pearl harbor 
and this will be good for submarines that have minor damage to their engines or something. I can repair it here once we get to port size of seven. What isn't so great is this, Rabal size eight. And that, you've probably heard me mention it before, but a size eight airfield is your gold standard. That's what you want because it takes whatever existing aviation support you have there and it doubles it when you're at a size eight or higher airfield. So that's kind of a huge deal for me that means he could start stacking a double the aircraft that he's got there now if he were so inclined <clears throat> and he wouldn't have to bring in any more support units to do it so that's not good for me all right we also see that the the tennessee where is that at or maybe it's i may have missed it okay the tennessee beginning a refit that's over here at Mare island so I got, this is one of my Pearl Harbor survivors, right? She just pulled in the port and I have her repairing at Mare. Got 98 days to go, but we're also starting our first upgrade here. And that will give us quite a bit more anti-aircraft firepower, which will be good for us as we go along in this campaign. All right, the next thing I want to point to you out, we're almost done with this. Uh, the crane available in a damaged state at Pago Pago. So this is one of my destroyers that was damaged during a port strike a couple weeks ago. I think I want to go ahead and try to make a run for it and see if we can clear out of here before it's too late. I think his ships left finally. Uh, for one, we don't see them there. And two, we do have some... Uh, naval research from Rotonga. I feel confident that if we take this ship, the crane, we'll put it as an escort. You know what? Well, here's what we need to do. Let's dock it, fuel it. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, this ain't gonna be good. I don't know if we have enough fuel to get to Pearl, so maybe we can try to get to Palmyra. Let's try that. Return to Palmyra. Alright, we're going to make a run for it. Uh, I hope we can clear out of here in time. If it gets lost, it gets lost. But this is my way of trying to save this ship. It's, it's the only real way I know of. Okay, and the last thing I want to point out to you is this. GBT-2 arrives at Aden. And what is that, you might ask? Well, it's one of my Dutch uh, patrol squadrons from a while back. I had disbanded this in the Dutch East Indies when it was destroyed or it was about to be overrun or something like that. And what happens when you do that is they come back at Aiden and you can change the command then to something that's not restricted and then you can use them. It, unfortunately, in my case, uh, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here because I have no more patrol aircraft to really put in this unit. So it, I'm just going to leave it here to train some pilots. And they will train this very, very slowly. But hey, we got that out of the Dutch. He's in these, right? Okay, I think that's enough of those reports. Let's go ahead and talk about the turn. Oh, I should take a look up here real quick. Well, there's nothing really happening up here. Uh, okay, so we had the blowout here in the last two turns. He finally destroyed the unit that was left in the hex. But honestly, that's not the worst thing ever because when that unit comes back, it will come back in the Chungking. And I don't know if it's 30 days or 60 days. I forget exactly what it is. But they come back with one-third of their TOE already in it. That unit had less than that in it when it died. So it comes back with more firepower than it had when it died. So there's really no downside to letting your Chinese units die in the field. They just get their respawn in Chungking with more devices than they had when they died. So there's, there's no no downside to it. And we see here, looking at this little arrow in the bottom right-hand corner, that these troops are heading back into Sion, which I think is interesting. I, I thought he would maybe continue pushing this way because that, that thing has a lot of firepower in it. Let's see if we can figure out exactly what his... Yeah, 2,000 AV in there. And I, I don't even know if that's correct. Um, I would at least throw them in here and keep us tied down, but he's not even doing that. So 
Uh, he's retreating back to Sion and we'll let him. And, you know, bye. So, I think we stabilize stuff for now. Okay, we got this hex okay. We got this hex okay. We're building forts. The supply is good. These guys are building forts. Supply is good. So, we... I think we stopped Lodric up here for the time being. And if he comes from the north, that's fine too. Because Lan Chao still got six, almost 600 AV in there, right? Building up size 4 forts on times 3 terrain. It'd basically be a shock attack if he came across from here or here. And he's, unless he came in with 4 times what I got here, which I don't think he's got that amount of troops to throw into this, we should be okay. So Lan Chao's protected from the north. The second I see something coming down the road, I'm pulling these guys back into here and we'll give them signing. I don't need it anyway. Uh, into the central part of China. Um, he's moving up this way towards Ai Chang, and this unit is trying to get out of the way, but I don't know with them getting bond every turn if they're going to make it. These guys, I got one unit left here. Uh, next turn they'll be into, into here, and I've got 3600 AV in that Hex times three terrain, as you can see, WR. So Lodric ain't breaking through here. Uh, Lodric has left his tanks in Chin and Chi Kiang, and he's got, I guess, another unit coming up behind it. But we've stopped them here. Um, this base has tons of supply now. We've got forts building up, plenty of troops, and a lot more coming. So we'll have over. 20 let's see here 500 460 180 we should have over 2,000 assault value worth of troops in chi in, in a few turns and uh he won't break through there and then down here we've got 2700 here and another 600 coming in here we'll have 3700 av here right something like that 30 no my math is terrible 3300 av here on times three terrain and our troops are now building forts. So, again, I think we're going to be able to stop all three of Lodric's main routes of advance for the time being. Except for this one. He may want to start going up towards Ai Chang. And when I see that he's doing that, I'll shift troops into block um, this hex here. Maybe this hex here to slow him down. Because it will be a slow, a low, slow slog for him to come cross through these mountains or come through this road here. So... That gives me time to react, and I do have reserves in Chungking as well. And we're also building up further lines of advance or lines of defense back at Kui Yang and Tu Yun. Tu Yun. So I, I'm feeling better about my China situation. We lost a lot of troops, we lost a lot of points here, but I think we've stabilized it again. And every time that one of Lodric's uh, pincer fingers breaks off to go another direction, he's reducing his force. This by far is the biggest one he's got. This is his biggest death stack. Death stack, death stack. He hates when I say it, so I'm going to say it like five times. Death stack. Um, I think we can stop it. And if we can stop this one, we can stop the rest. Okay, uh, Burma, Thailand area. We're in full retreat now. Or should I re let me rephrase that. Full tactical withdrawal. I'm pulling all the troops out. I'm abandoning this operation because based on the signal we got last turn, his troops are on the move towards Mole Mine. Now, unless they shift direction and go somewhere else real quick, um, I want to be ready for that. So I'm pulling everything back, and we're going to basically turtle up all the way to Rangoon. We'll give up Mole Mine. Pegu may fall, uh, but I cannot lose Rangoon. Because as long as I have Rangoon, I have this road open up here. We still have the Burma Road. I don't need this one. And then on top of all that, I have British, Indian, and Australian troops coming down the road near Kalemio. And we'll take up positions in here. And we should be able to hold them up here as well. So that was one good thing. I had a lot of troops coming in from up here. What's this? Where is this supposed to go? Huh. I'll have to figure out where that's supposed to go. And that too. Huh. I don't know where I was supposed to move those guys. We'll figure out where they're supposed to go. Uh, yeah. So, we'll hold them up here and we'll hold them at Rangoon. And 
just to be careful, I am positioning a lot of additional uh, aircraft at Akiab. I've got more fighters in Rangoon now. I'm ready to put up a fight. If he's going to invade, he's going to pay dearly in ships. Um, I know he'll bring his carriers and, I'm, and also take a look at this at Bangkok. He started moving fighters back in. So he's got 140 fighters. Last turn he had about 80. So he's preparing for something here. I, I can see that. So we're just going to have to be strong as well. And, we'll, and I'm already repositioning things to, to handle that. I think we can... We won't hold Mole Mine. He'll come and take it. But I think we'll make him pay dearly in ships. And we'll hold him at Rangoon. That's the plan for now. Alright, so let's talk about the Dutch East Indies. Uh, I don't... Okay. Lodrick is landing here. I don't know why. Like, Makassar is definitely the more important base to capture. This is not. Why not just go into here? I don't understand this guy sometimes. Like, he picks some of the weirdest bases to take. So, he's slowly going to start working on Celebus, and that's okay. But, um, yeah, it's going to it's gonna take him a while to get down to Makassar, and even longer to get to Kandari doing it this way. Elsewhere at Kupang, Kopang, Kupang, uh, I did get a supply convoy in there, so we bumped up the supply. We continue to move troops in. All right, slowly building up that AV to make it harder for him to take it. I am working on the fortification level right now. And then pretty soon, I'll be able to start evacuating these guys. They are getting kind of close. Okay. In a couple days, they're going to be here and then I can start pulling them out with my float planes at Kupang and, and evacuate these guys back to here so basically if you look at this on these planes anything within the red line are are units that can be transported by air like the troop transport anything with the red line is is good to go so but they had but for the float planes to do it they have to be on a coastal hex so that's why they're going here. I couldn't do it from here right now. We'll take a quick swing around China. It's, uh, I'm sorry, China. It's not China. This is Australia. It's been pretty quiet over here for a while. All right. So we're looking at Australia right now. Uh, we see Lodric hovering just north of Catherine. I don't know if he's waiting, if he's afraid to shock attack or what. But in the meantime, we're evacuating all, all these guys. Everything that we can. Hopefully they get out of here in time. We're going to head down to Tennant Creek, Normanton, Cloncurry. And again, forsaking all of this. But I got troops here and we're kind of planning for a... Uh, we're just planning a... I just want to have troops here just in case he wants to continue pushing. Because I do want to stop him here. Okay, down here... It's been very quiet all around New Zealand. And the eastern coast of Australia has been quiet for some time since Lodric's carriers moved out. Now, I guess I don't need to be too secretive about it. Um, we just landed at Milne Bay. Uh, I've sent in two task force loaded with a lot of support troops and some, some, some AV, all right? There's some in there. And my intention is to build up Milne Bay as a compliment to Port Moresby so we can start targeting for ball a little bit harder. Uh, I have a lot of other bombers that can hit, but they have a range limitation. And Milne Bay is nine hexes away and Port Moresby is 10, right? So my Hudson's, for example, or it's 11 rather, my Hudson's can operate better out of Milne Bay than they can out of Port Moresby without going into extended range. So I want to build this base up for no other reason uh, than to deny it to him and also to, again, as I mentioned, to be strong down here and have another base to operate aircraft out of for a ball. A lot of shipping activity. We already talked about uh, the SIGINT that we got at Rabal. We see these ships around here. Don't really know what's up with that. Oh, these poor guys, the Polak. Polak. Uh, 
fired some torpedoes, got a hit on an ACM and missed. If they'd hit, it would have blown it up. But we got some more ships further down here for them to fall into. Hopefully, uh, they drive into these guys. The plunger. Let's give him a shot, see what they can come up with. Not much sighted out here right now. At Luganville, we just see these guys. It's been real quiet at Numea. We've been fine with that. Uh, Lodra continues to clean up all these islands out here in Tonga and Fiji, and I expected him to. He just landed at Savi as well, so he's going to take that base and quite a bit of supplies there, unfortunately. And last but not least, uh, Lodric attacked at Pago Pago, but we did hold him in. Our AV looks strong. So these guys are doing pretty good, right? We're not really taking any destroyed units right now. Unfortunately, the disruption is very, very high on a couple of these units. So we need to get that down. And that would require us to stop getting attacked by air and bombarded by sea. And if that's the case, we can get this disruption level down and continue holding out. And we are also back to building the fort level, but it will take some time because the base is damaged. And that has to be repaired first. And we don't have a lot of engineers. So Pago Pago is kind of on a precarious... Uh, it's... It's precarious right now. I'll put it to you that way. So the next few days are going to be vital to us. See if we can hold it a bit longer. Okay, man, I've been talking for a while. 22 minutes. That's 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 the turn. But before I go, I'm going to pause this real quick and bring up Tracker because I want to show you something very interesting. Wait here. Okay. Um, I hope you can see this. I hope it's not too small on your screen. This is Tracker, and I look at the alerts every turn, right? I look at uh, the alerts for the current turn, and as I was scrolling down through here, I noticed something that stood out to me, and it made me scratch my head and go, wait, what? Look at this. Turn 110, CVL Ryujo, enemy ship sunk, sunk by 1,000 pound bombs near Akiab. So, for whatever reason, Tracker is tracking that I sank the Ryujo, but we didn't see anything in the game about it. At all. Like, I went through all the intel reports, I went through everything I could see, and I saw no mention of, of Ryujo sunk, at least there. But as far as Tracker is concerned, it's tracking that it sank. And here's another piece of information to back that up. You ready? I went over to the victory point screen. Uh, okay, hold on. This is like a double. There. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. I don't know if what you guys have seen before, but hopefully you're seeing it right now. Um, look here at the bottom. On the bottom line, this is the current turn, okay? Turn 110. And if you look over here, as the Japanese ship sunk total goes up one point from 95 to 96. Look at the points that went up. It looks suspiciously like a light carrier's victory points value, right? So, Tracker is convinced, at least, that we sank the Ryujo. I thought we did, but I had no proof of it. So this is the first kind of concrete stuff that I've seen that is proving that we sank sank the Ryujo. So um, let's hope that that's actually true. And maybe next turn we'll see something uh, more definitive that shows that we sank it. And it's something in our ops report that proves it. But this is pretty compelling information. So... Um, i like to see this, and I hopefully we can see something about the the, uh, the heavy cruisers and the Zuiho that we damaged as well. I have no proof that they sank, but this is kind of proof that the, the Ryujo sank. So, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about this latest piece of intelligence that we got about the Ryujo. And um, I look forward to reading your comments. I'll catch you guys on the next one.